Hi everybody, it is July 12th, 2020, back for another Garden Diaries update. This one's going to be pretty quick, um, it just stormed really bad through here so it's really wet. Um, I want to spray my plants again and then I'm going to get back in the house. So I told you last time that I would show you exactly what I'm spraying. This is neem oil extract I got from Tractor Supply. Oh, and I use this cat litter box to store my spray in. I put it in a bag, and then I put it in here, just so I do not have to risk anybody or anything getting into it. This neem oil extract, it is organic. Um, for organic gardening, it's three products in one. It's good for fungicide, insecticide, miticide. So, last week, I only sprayed... The eggplants and the potatoes and the squash. Um, today I'm going to spray the entire garden. I'm losing some peppers and I think it is because of a fungal bacteria in the soil. So the directions on this neem oil it is hold on I'll pause you and I'll bring you back. Okay, it is, there it is, at the rate of two tablespoons per gallon. So my container is a half a gallon, so I just do one tablespoon. And what I have been using, and this is a pressurized sprayer I got from Tractor Supply also. Um, you just, you have, make sure it's sealed tight. You pump the handle, and then you can actually put it on auto spray. So you can just walk through the garden and keep spraying instead of like pressing it down over and over. And I measure my tablespoon with this here. Just a syringe we have left over from, you know, one of the kids being sick. One of the fur babies being sick, something like that. So I'm going to spray the whole garden with this today. And then I'm going to hit the cabbage and tomatoes with this again this is the stuff that I said last week has BT in it um, it is also organic gardening worm and caterpillar killer and this one I know that the concentrate on this was smaller um, let's see one tablespoon per gallon so I'm going to do half a tablespoon for my half gallon container. But I'm going to do that after the video. The neem oil smells really bad. So I don't want to be in the garden after I have sprayed that. Um, as you can see, the picture on this video is a lot better. My husband got a new phone. And I cannot quite remember what it's called. But the video and picture clarity is amazing. This morning I picked a squash and several cucumber. I'm actually got some cucumbers prepped in the fridge right now that I'm going to pickle. They were too ripe, but I found a recipe online by Ted Manzer. He said his mom and his father were Scottish and apparently pickling overripe tomatoes is a thing in Germany and Scotland. They do a lot of sweet pickles over there where they use cinnamon and allspice. I'm not going to do that. Um, he shared a relish recipe, and we love relish, so I'm going to do that. I did bring my tally book out so you could see just how many veggies I've picked so far this year. Yellow squash, I've got 17 of them so far. Burpless cucumbers, 11. Bush pickle, 16. Banana peppers, 15. And zucchini, 15. I'm actually going to be making a zucchini lasagna tonight. This morning I boiled and or blanched and chilled squash and put it into gallon bags for the freezer. And that will be, they were a little too big for just sauteing, so those will be good for casseroles or stews. My potatoes are almost completely dead. There is some new growth and it's probably from that latest potato that we planted. Um, the one that was just sprouting in our, in our kitchen, so we decided to plant it. The weeds, 
have grown a lot since the last video. Um, it's mostly just grass. I will get out here in the next couple mornings to get all the weeds out. It's just so much easier to pull them when they're taller. I know you shouldn't let the weeds get taller because of possible bacterias. Um, but for us and with the amount of hours that we work at our jobs, I mean, you're talking a minimum of 50 to 55 hours a week if we don't work Saturday. It's just really hard to get out here. Um, we are going on vacation this week. So I might do a video before we go on vacation because I'm going to try to get this garden as cleaned up as I can before we go. But now to take you in for some close-ups. Again, I haven't sprayed the neem oil or the cabbage or the caterpillar spray since last week. So you're definitely going to see some bugs and things. Um, I'm excited that I'm going to be spraying tonight. The tomatillas, I mean look at that. I can't even get into the garden because of the tomatillas. They are, they seem to me anyways to be doing really good. I've never grown them before. I can tell you that none of them are ready to pick. So I'm hoping that, I'm assuming that most of them will be ready at the same time. And I'm hoping I'll be able to do a big batch of salsa verde. The storms have really blown around our zucchini and squash. Um, I just picked one squash this morning. I do have some more um, baby squash coming, or baby zucchini coming along in here. You can see, there's a little guy right there. About every plant has at least one or two of those. I just think it's been, it's been so hot and then they get blowed around, so. One of our sunflowers is finally starting to make a little flower. We're really excited about that. Um, the sunflowers, as you can see, have finally gotten taller than we are. And the beans are just growing up them like crazy. The cucumber is an absolute madhouse. I was climbing in here, which now that the storms have blown this around, I can get in there pretty easy, easier. Not pretty easy, but easier. And that's where I found all the overripe cucumbers. They were turning yellow and huge. Um, I think one cucumber probably weighed two pounds, if not three pounds. The spaghetti squash, um, it, does not, it looked like it was dying, but now some of it looks like it's doing better. So I don't really know. I think it like takes root in other places, like when it grows. Because we did notice something. The spaghetti squash has grown all the way to here, through the cucumber trellises, and into those tomatoes over there, as you can see. That's spaghetti squash. The beans are starting to flower. So I'm excited. I think by the time we get back from vacation, I'll have a mess of beans. Um, our friend, our dear friend Belinda, who's house-sitting, I told her she can pick anything she wants and eat anything she wants, because there's a lot. The cabbage are looking a lot better since I did spray them last week. I mean, they definitely need a spray again. I can't tell you how many of those cabbage moths I see in a day. There's a lot. The tomatoes, they have that wonderful tomato smell. Um, I crawled in through here earlier to pick some cucumbers, and I smelled like tomatoes all morning, and I was not complaining. Some, These are the Bradley tomatoes, and they're freaking huge. Um, like, look at this. This is one tomato. This one tomato. That's like the size of a baseball. I have small hands, so these are just, they're beautiful right now. I'm hoping they stay beautiful. Here's a really big one. I mean, look at that. That's bigger than a baseball. So, and the banana peppers are crazy. I'm kind of just letting the banana peppers hang out. I really want to see if they turn red. I want to see if they get bigger. You know, a lot of this stuff I had never planted before. The eggplant, they definitely need a good spray again. I'm going to try to walk in here with flip-flops and hopefully not slide in the mud. We have an eggplant down here that's got some flowers on it. Look at that. Look how pretty. Look how pretty. 
We have some bell peppers. We have a few bell peppers, actually. This one is, oh, this guy's stuck between the stem. Oh my goodness, I don't know if I can get him out of there without breaking something. I'll have to work on that later, but I want to give him room to grow. We have a big bell pepper right here. I mean, here's my hand. There's the bell pepper. Look at that. Our habaneros, we do have some little habaneros. I mean, look at these. I'm excited. So excited. The jalapenos, we do have quite a few of those. The jalapeno, this jalapeno plant. I don't know if he's dying from the bacteria in the ground or if it's because he fell over and we had to emergency stake him. I don't know. I'm nervous about it because this one was wilty after we put the cage. This was before we bought the stakes. So I don't know. We're just learning together. The storm has definitely broken some of my tomato um, arms, but I mean, look how big they are. If I'm standing next to them, they're taller than me. I didn't know this was possible. So I put the cages in. Some of the cages have actually been uprooted because of the tomatoes being so large. I just don't know what to do about that. I mean, I'm kind of like, I don't really want to touch them because I don't want to risk them breaking more. But it is like a freaking jungle in here. Look at these big tomatoes. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Now this is, let's see. This is a Bradley tomato too. And if you don't remember my first video, I did say that the Bradley tomatoes was something new I'd never seen before. And I'm excited to try them. I'm kind of thinking they're going to be one I get every year. If I don't try to save some seeds from it. Look at these banana peppers. More banana peppers. Here's a here's a really good size, really good size jalapeno. Look at that. Bigger than my hand. Or as long as my hand, I mean. The tomatillos off from this side. You guys, I'm so excited. Oh my gosh, there is some there's some bell peppers down there too. So what I might do with the bell peppers, if they're ready to pick, or if I should pick them. Actually, you know, they can stay, because I think that the longer they stay, they'll turn red. If I if I decide to pick them, I'll just make them with breakfast one morning, probably. Or maybe I'll slice them and freeze them. I forgot that we had planted onions. You can hardly see them now. But I'm just going to keep letting them do their thing. I might research it and see when I should pick them. If I should go ahead and get them out of the ground, I will. That little cabbage down there, he's the one that was eaten up the most by the caterpillars. It's doing a little better, despite how awful it looks. This cabbage, as you can see, is doing pretty good. I got some beautiful broccoli. I tell you what, if you just want to grow broccoli because of how beautiful it is, I wouldn't blame you. But all of my broccoli have crowns in them now. This squash has, like, moved over here. And it's taken off. Like it's doing better. So I don't know what's going on. This tomato was one of the ones that was dying last week, if you don't remember. And now it has an almost ripe tomato that's Golden Jubilee. I mean, it still looks like crap. You can see it's all like burnt up and stuff. But that's exciting. So this is a Golden Jubilee. And just that one's a Golden Jubilee. Because I had two... Well, I guess one of them died. There was two of them, but that one's coming back to life. I can't remember what this was. Maybe early girls. But yeah, you guys, that's what's going on. Pretty exciting stuff. Um, I just love being in the garden. If it hadn't stormed today, I probably would have been out here most of the day. But I've been enjoying playing with all the vegetables in the kitchen. Like I said, I got 
some relish I'm making tonight. Um, I'll probably do that after a sunset just so I can kind of enjoy some enjoy some outside time um, as I'm spraying the garden. And I don't know. I just like watching the sunset. But here's to learning new things, everybody. We're learning. We got some cool stuff. I'm excited to see what we can make. Um, the next video, anything that I have prepped or froze or canned that we haven't ate already, I'll try to get that in my next video so you can see that. All right. Bye, everybody. Sorry, I look like a hot mess. Ah, lazy Sunday. Till next time. Bye.